Okay, so it's my great pleasure to have Katarina Bratzda from the University of Vienna speaking today. And she will talk about the Kahnham Hellfish model for the multiphase biomembranes. Thank you very much and take it away. So thank you a lot. Thanks to the organizers of um, the online seminar for the opportunity to speak here, to present my work here. So I will talk about the Kahnham Hellfish model for multiphase biomembranes. And so this is joint work with Luca Lusadi from Torino and with Ulisse Stefanelli. And so um, first I will, um, moment. yeah, first I will um, give you a brief outline of my talk. Namely, I will present the variational models that determine the shape of, bi the shapes of biomembranes. So I will first present the classical canham helfrich model. And then I will um, explain how this model can be generalized um, to include um, heterogeneous membranes where curvature is coupled to the, to the um, composition of the membrane. And then I come um, to the multiphase variable minimizers, uh, the results joined with Luca and Ulisse. I will first explain how, what, first, what are varifolds and then how to define Canham Helfrich and then present my existence result. So as a motivation, I'm, I, pre, I give, give you here one slide of biology, namely a human or animal cell. And here you can see, so I'm interested in the, these, all these shapes of the membranes that you can see here. So um, this is um, the plasma membrane, which separates the cell from its environment. And oops, inside, um, so, and inside the cell, there are also membranes. So, which are also, um, which have many different shapes. And you see, you have um, some tubes like this. Um, they, are, they can be important for the movement of the cell. And then there are other dynamical processes. So, there are, there are a lot of shapes, a lot of different topology, and I'm interested in these shapes here. So um, what are these membranes? So these membranes, they consist of lipid molecules, more precisely phospholipid molecules, and have embedded cholesterol and other proteins. So, and they form a bilayer. So because they have um, hydrophilic um, heads and hydrophobic tails. So they spontaneously aggregate um, to fo form these bilayers. And, um, they are bounded by van der Waals type of forces. And um, so inside this um, layer, we have these proteins. And so, so these, these normally form vesicles, that means closed um, surfaces, because they, they don't want to have exposed ends. And from a physical or from a continuum mechanical perspective, these are very, very interesting material because they behave um, in plane like a two-dimensional incompressible viscous fluid, but out of plane, they show bending elasticity effects. And this is somehow nice um, because they combine fluid mechanics and elasticity. So um, now let's come to the variational models that explain the shapes of these biomembranes. So of course the most um, the most known shape of a biomembrane is, is the shape of a human red blood cell, which is this has this biconcave geometry, and um, so you observe these shapes that these shapes are relatively stable throughout um, the time of minutes to hours. So it's natural that there is some energy minimization um, behind these shapes. And this is the so-called model by Canham helfrich or the Canham helfrich model. They introduced, so Canham was motivated precisely by the shape of the um, red blood cells and Helfrich um, refined this model a bit. Namely, according to this model, um, the shapes of um, biological membranes, they minimize the elastic bending energy. 
So, um, which is a quadratic curvature energy. energy. You see here H, the mean curvature of um, the membrane, and um, K, the Gauss curvature. So, we're doing extrinsic geometry in R3 here. And um, so, um, and we describe um, the membranes as surfaces. Um, and um, the, the area um, of these surfaces is assumed to be fixed because um, we have um, a fixed number of molecules that constitute the membrane, as well as the volume that is enclosed by the membrane. This is also fixed because of the osmotic pressure balance. So coming, let me comment a bit more on the energy. So you, you see here um, the mean curvature minus the so-called spontaneous curvature, which was introduced by Helfrich, which is um, the curvature that the membrane naturally wants to have. And this can be explained or attributed to an asymmetry between the two um, lipid layers, the inner layer and the outer layer, or some specially curved pro surface proteins um, that want to have a special uh, prescribed curvature here. And then we have the bending rigidity beta for, for the mean curvature and gamma um, for the Gauss curvature. And here, just the two-dimensional house of measures, the classical um, surface area measure. So, um, so this is a geometric variational problem. So minimizing here this can have helpful energy that I show you here again with the fixed area and the fixed enclosed volume. So um, the area is just like, like normal and the, the um, enclosed volume um, is written here um, with the help of the divergence theorem, just um, with new the unit normal vector of the surface. And of course, um, the given constraints on area and um, volume, they have to satisfy to, in order to find minimizers at all, they have to satisfy the isoparametric inequality in a three. And um, so, since we are dealing with um, closed membranes for constant um, Gaussian bending rigidity, um, the, the Gaussian contribution is usually neglected in the minimization process. And the most famous special case of the Canham Helfrich energy is the Wilmer energy, which is just the mean curvature squared. So, um, what shapes do, does one find? So here you see um, vesicle shapes that were obtained by numerical solution of the shape equation. So you see, starting from the sphere, you can have these um, prolate shapes that look like a pier, and then you see um, that budding occurs, so the cell splits. Or you can also have like red blood cell shape, but um, with symmetry breaking. So these are all, um, um, shapes um, that solve, uh, or uh, these shapes are axisymmetric sh shapes that are solutions to the shape equation have, that have been obtained numerically. So what is, um, how does the shape equation look like? So if you again take the, the canham helfrich energy and add um, the area and the volume constraint of Lagrange multipliers, then you obtain the shape equation like that. So just to comment, the Lagrange multiplier for the area um, is phys can be physically interpreted as the surface tension, whereas the um, Lagrange multiplier for the volume constraint um, can be um, interpreted as the pressure difference between inner and outer um, environment of the membrane. And so this, this shape equation here, what you can see here, this is the Laplace Beltrami operator. So it's a fourth. So for a parameterization of the surface, it's a fourth order um, quasi-linear um, elliptic PDE, and which looks quite complicated. But if one restricts this to rotational symmetry, then one can really solve this, and one finds shapes, as I've shown you in the previous slide, which are indeed observed in nature. So here, these are not bilayer vesicles, but they are single-layer vesicles but that are put in different temperatures where um, the area to volume ratio is then, is then different. And so um, we, we really observe these shapes that um, are solutions to this shape equation. Okay, so let's, we, I'm interested in the minimization problem. And if we um, look at the Canham-Helfrich energy, 
show it, show it again here, then we see that we can, for some parameter regimes of beta and gamma, we can bound um, the L2 norm of the second fundamental form. So simply in R3, this is just the um, principal curvature squared, the sum of these. And um, so we, we can bound this by the energy and by the area. And since the area is fixed in the canham helfrich problem, this is um, already nice. So these bounds hold um, under, under the assumption, or under this assumption on the material, material parameters, so for beta and gamma. So beta is positive, but gamma needs to be negative. And this is really also the range that has been um, identified by experiments. So um, this, such an estimate can also be obtained if, if one um, fixes the genus of a, of a closed surface for this um, um, energy, can have healthy energy without the Gaussian term. And so this is, looks promising for the direct method. But however, when applying the direct method, this is not so straightforward. So one cannot directly apply this to, the, to immersions. Um, so if one describes the surface as an immersion, because first, of course, one has all the um, convergence up to reparameterizations. And then, um, as was also observed by Langer, we, um, the L2 um, curvature bounds are not enough to get um, compactness in the C1 topology, because um, by Sobolev embedding, we just need um, LP curvature bounds was p greater than two. So this is just the border line of the Sobolev embedding. So <laughs> compactness is not so straightforward and also lower semi-continuity can fail because there is an, an, uh, an example um, by Große Brauchmann, which has also commented in, in or elaborated in Schätzle, um, to the of lower semi-continuity, even with very fault convergence, which is the very general convergence I will explain just in a moment. So basically what, what, what they have found is um, a surface with a sequence of surface with constant mean curvature equal to one, such, such that um, this term is zero, which converges to a plane with, with multiplicity two, such that um, the limit energy is not zero. So this is a counter example. So with the canham helfrich energy, it's not so, so easy to, to find solution. But nevertheless, some results have been obtained. So um, for completeness, I first um, list some results for the Wilmore energy, which is, as I said, this is a, spe a special case of the canham helfrich energy. But I restrict to results um, for the Wilmore energy with prescribed isoperimetric ratio. So because for the Wilmore energy, this energy is scale invariant. More precisely, it's conformally invariant. So volume and area constraints um, they boil down to prescribing the isoperimetric ratio. And um, just here, yeah, of course, as is well known, that um, the sphere minimizes, um, is, is the global minimizer um, with value will is equal to 4 pi. And then with the isoperimetric ratio um, prescribed, um, Shigula proved um, existence of minimizers with the ambient or geometric measure theory approach um, by, by Simon. So this is working with the images of the embeddings, whereas um, higher genus embeddings have been, the existence of higher genus embeddings have been um, established by Keller, Mondino and Rivière with the, within the parametric approach, which works directly with um, a weak notion of immersions due to Rivière. So, so far for the Wilmer energy. And now for the canham helfrich energy, there are not so many results up to now. So um, there is a result by Choksi and Veneroni, um, which restrict to axisymmetric um, surfaces that one obtains by rotating um, a, a, a smooth curve like, like this. And um, then there is a result, a general result for functionals, um, depending on curvatures, where one has to restrict to surfaces having the uniform ball property, so no kinks in particular. So uniform 
whole property means you can inscribe a ball and outscribe a ball and there are no, no um, cusps and so on. And then just recently, Mondino and Chara proved um, existence um, um, by using the class of weak sphere immer immersions where weak is, uh, this is the parametric approach by um, Rivière, and weak means um, that we have um, Lipschitz immersions with um, kind of boundedness on the um, second fundamental form. And their solutions in, can be branched and bubbled, but they showed that if the um, spontaneous curvature is small enough, smaller than a constant in terms of um, prescribed area and volume, then the minimizing the smooth embeddings. But this is a very, very recent result. Okay, so this was, um, this was the, there's one, Chats, I think. Oops, no, this was much too fast. So yeah, okay. So if there is no question, then I go on. Of course. Um, so one can. can... I have a question. So may I ask? Yes. What Please. do you know anything about this monist condition? Is this, this is an explicit constant, or or do you just know that there is a constant? Um, this is explicit. So there's, you can look at the paper by Mondino and Chang. It's very, very new. There's an explicit constant dependent on this area and, and this volume, um, such that if the spontaneous curvature is smaller than, than this constant, then it minimizes the smooth embeddings. So it's explicit. Okay. Thanks. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, so an other way to obtain minimizers um, is um, via the flow. So one can um, con consider the, the gradient flow dynamics um, of um, immersions. And so starting from, which starting from an initial condition uh, or an initial embedding converges to um, the minimum. And here, this is a nice um, optimization result by um, colleagues from TU Wien. So you see here really um, the red blood cell we have, this is just the Wilmore energy with, um, the half, half um, target volume of the sphere. And um, so there for the canham halfridge functional, we have to respect also the constraints and there are two possibilities. So either one considers um, the canham halfridge flow um, where area and volume are fixed, so globally constrained, or one considers the flow of, of the um, canham halfridge functional where we add the area and the volume functional with Lagrange multipliers. And if one does so with the L2 gradient flow, one obtains um, the evolution equation um, in the following form, where you see here again the part from the shape equation, and here V is the velocity um, of the surface. So also this equation is not so easy to solve. But um, for the gradient flow, there are results on, on the existence for smooth um, immersed closed surfaces. Namely, one knows uh, that uh, we have short time existence and uniqueness, and there is also a lifespan um, estimate if the initial curvature is small on balls. And then if the um, initial surface is um, close to a sphere, and we even have long time existence with convergence to a sphere, but there are also finite time singularities as recently um, proved by, by, by Simon. So these are the results um, on, on the Canham health free flow. So, and um, these are based on results um, for the Wilmore flow or on using results on, for general curvature flow. So this is another way to prove um, existence of, of minimizers by um, considering the Canham health free flow problem. Okay. So, but I'm interested in um, multi-phase membranes. So membranes that look like this, what you, as you can see here. So this is an, an, an image, it's really an experimental observation of a two-phase giant unilamellar vesicle. So it's not a bilayer, but it's a single layer. And it's, a, it's giant because it's so large that you can see this with an optical microscope. And um, what you can see here is a vesicle that is composed of two different um, lipids. One lipid which likes to be more curved and one lipid which, which likes to be more flat. So how, how does one describe these kind of um, membranes or shapes? So this head 
heterogeneous biomembranes. So one just has an additional phase density defined on the membrane. And this phase density, this models, say the different lipid composition or the distribution of proteins, etc. So in the simplest approximation, I only have one phase density which describes my composition of the membrane. And of course, when one introduced this into the um, kahnan helfrich model, then the bending rigidities and the spontaneous curvatures, they will depend on the phase density. And moreover, with an additional density, there comes an additional energy, maybe mixing energy or phase energy. There are different models in the biology or physical literature or how to, to, to do this. So this is an additional term um, in the energy. But most importantly, as I said in the beginning, the um, biological membranes, they are two-dimensional fluids. So they have a lateral fluidity. So this density, or the, if there are some, some proteins in, in, on the surface, they are able to flow and to flow precisely at a spot which better suits to, to their curvature or where they like to be. So therefore, now the minimization is not only with respect to the membrane shape, but also with respect to the density, which is defined on the membrane. So this is uh, an, a, another model. So the minimization problem now reads as follows. We have to minimize um, this canham helfrich energy among closed surfaces in a fray with prescribed like, an area and prescribed volume and we also minimize this with respect to the phase density where um, the mass of the density is also fixed. So this is again the approximation in that we have an equilibrium. Okay so this is a bit complicated so therefore there are um, easier models namely the easiest special case which is also similar to the picture that we have seen is the case of two phases that with sharp interface so sharp phase interfaces. We have um, a dark blue phase and a light blue phase, say. And this model has been um, introduced by Julia and Dipovsky, so that um, one has now um, the canham helfrich contribution for each individual phase with corresponding mat material parameters, plus a line tension energy, which penalizes uh, the length of the phase interfaces. So it's um, with line tension coefficient and then times the length of the phase interface. And then one has to minimize this two phase energy among compact surfaces. So now the energy is a function of, of the two surfaces, which may have, can have several collected components, such that we really want to describe a membrane like this. So lipid bilayers don't want to have exposed boundaries, so their union must have empty boundary, then um, their intersection must be such that this is just on um, the phase um, interfaces. So it's, it coincides with the boundaries of the phases and this should be a union of curves. And then um, we have fixed phase areas and fixed enclosed volume of the whole um, vesicle. So this is the minimization problem that um, I'm interested in. And of course, also you can generalize this to more than only two phases. So then um, this looks like this. You have an energy which depends on n surfaces and consists of the sum of the canham helfrich energy for each individual phase plus line tension energy penalization with um, the closeness constraint, then the overlap constraint that we only have overlap precisely at the boundary and area and volume. So this is um, the um, problem that I'm interested in. And there are also already some results in this direction, namely also again by um, Choksi Moran, now Morandotti and Veneroni. They considered this problem for axisymmetric su um, surfaces like this. This picture is also from, from them with two different phases that are piecewise constant. And then there is also an another work again with the assumption of axisymmetry which um, obtains um, configurations like that, which can also have kinks um, based on gamma convergence results, which is a variational convergence where in particular, the line tension energy um, is approximated 
with the diffuse interface ansatz that one takes a double well potential phi and so that rho wants to be either say zero or one but also um, I penalize the gradient of rho and then takes the limit epsilon to zero and when one can show that this term precisely corresponds uh, converges to the line tension energy on the jumps of, of this um, of the density rho. And then just recently, um, we, together with Luca and Ulisse, we obtained an existence result um, without any um, symmetry assumptions, but we, we work with oriented curvature variables with boundary, and I will just come to this result in a moment. But first, there are, let me also mention concerning the canham helfrich flow, for multiple phases, up to my best of my knowledge, there are only numerical modeling studies up to now, but they have really nice pictures and I really recommend you to look at, at these publications because you see really nice shapes. Okay, so then I come to the second part of my talk, namely giving you some details on the multi-phase um, varifold minimizers. So, I don't expect that you are really familiar with varifolds, so I give you a brief introduction. So, um, what are varifolds? So, varifolds are a geometric measure theory um, generalization of submanifolds, and they were um, introduced um, in fifties, sixties. So, what are they? They are um, non-negative radon measures, not only in space, so omega is an open domain, but also a measure on the Grassmannian. So they take into account where um, the surface sits or the manifold, submanifold sits, so it's really for submanifolds, and um, which orientation or which tangent space um, we have, either with orientation or without. There are two possibilities. So varifolds are measures, and measures have good compactness um, properties with respect to the weak convergence. So, and um, one can, um, if one wants to know where, um, where, where the variable is in, in space omega, then one considers um, the push forward map um, by the projection on, on omega, and one gets a non negative prior measure just on omega. And um, this is um, the, the next um, simple or next special case for, vari for a variable is a so called integral variable which is really close to a submanifold. Namely, it sits on a countably M rectifiable set and um, has, it actually is almost in, um, equal to this set, but with the twist that we have here, um, an integer multiplicity. So the measure looks as follows. We have the M dimensional Hausdorff measure restricted to this, um, countably m rectifiable set m in the space domain times the integer multiplicity, so integer positive integer multiplicity, and then in the tangent space, um, we just sit precisely at the approximate tangent space on this, um, to this um, countably m rectifiable set. So these are integral varifolds which have a manifold and also um, lo precisely located tangent spaces. And then for, in the case of oriented varifolds, we have for each orientation up or down two different um, multiplicities. So these are oriented integral varifolds. Okay, so we want to define canham helfrich and canham helfrich needs curvature. So also curvature has been defined um, for varifolds. So um, these, um, so we have, um, a notion by Hutchinson and by Mantegazza, where Mantegazza introduces, uh, generalizes the um, notion of curvature um, and to the presence of a boundary. So we define a curvature varifold with boundary as um, a varifold where, in addition, we have curvature functions that are L L1 log and um, vector valadon measures that are the generalized boundary, such that this um, generalized um, divergence theorem holds. So if this um, exists, then, then we say that we have a curvature varifold with boundary. And these um, objects, so 
A and and the boundary, the general, the generalized, the usual concepts in the smooth case. So just for completeness, for the, or for fixing the notation, um, I use A as the general like generalized curvature function. Sometimes it's also denoted by B. There are different versions, and um, there is, this relates to the classical second fundamental form, like like this with these relations here. And if one takes the trace, one obtains the mean curvature vector um, of the surface. So we have now variables with curvature. We have the full second fundamental form. So we are ready to define our canham helfrey functional. And we do this as follows. So um, we don't have the scalar mean curvature.
we, one still has to identify suitable models for these material parameters, where I'm not aware of any of these in the, in the applied literature. So I, I'm currently working with a simplified model on, based on curves, why I have only one um, density dependent um, coefficient where um, I want to find out which, which coefficient produces which kind of solutions. Okay, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there questions, remarks, comments?